Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how O2 works, how you can consume the APIs that have been built with O2. So I will uh, explain you with an example of Google, how you can consume Google APIs. And this is not specific to Google. Uh, once you get the understanding how O2 works with uh, custom scopes, then it is applicable to every platform like if you want to consume uh, azure active direct uh, i mean you can want to consume microsoft apis using azure active directory or you want to consume any other custom apis that is uh, that is making use of scopes so uh, you will get the uh, you will you know get an understanding of entire uh, ecosystem how o2 works with uh, custom scopes so now you can see this diagram on my uh, screen so this, this is a setup you can look on this part first so think you want to consume google api so google has a lot of products like they have gmail they have google photos drive contacts and a lot of other services as well google sheets um, google gtalk and a lot of other services so and google has exposed the api of all these services okay so now uh, and google has one identity provider which you can see on the top okay now you want to consume some of the apis of google so in this example i am taking this gmail photos drive and contacts i want to consume these four apis okay so now these are the four apis i have taken into consideration now the second point is scope so each api uh, has certain permissions so scope is nothing just a permission so uh, for example this drive api has permissions like uh, first permission is read only second permission is write full access third permission could be read only photos fourth permission could be read only videos so these kind of different permissions uh, each api can expose okay so now you have to request what kind of scope you need for example your application need only uh, need only read read only permissions like you just want to read the data which is there in google drive so you will request uh, the api with only that scope so i am considering that there are n scopes for each api you can see so what you will do you will go and create an app client okay you if you are reading if you are you know, watching this video you must be aware of app client so what you will do you will create an app client or client app and uh, when you specify or when you create a client app you select the scopes of the api that you want okay so i will take you to my google app registration sc uh, screen so here i am on my app which is my google uh, i mean in google this is a project but in azure active directory we call it App, you know we call it app which is inside app registration so here i'm on auth consent screen and you can see add or remove scopes so here i see a lot of apis like big query api if i go to cloud monitoring api so these are uh, these all are google services and you have to enable the uh, api uh, sorry you have to enable the services and after enabling the services they will appear here so there are a lot of scopes so you uh, can select those scopes that you want uh, in your application okay so yeah and similarly in app registration i select my app and here in api permissions because this is the app uh, i am going to create and if i select app, add a permission so i see a lot of apis okay azure i want to access azure storage api i want to explore uh, microsoft graph api so i can select this and from here i will get again a lot of scopes so i can select those scopes and click on add permissions so what essentially will happen i will create this client app which will you know have information about what kind of scope it want to access on a particular api okay so you are done you have created a client app you will get two things out of it you will get a client id and you will get a client secret okay so now your setup is done and you you have created your client app so next step what you will do you will initiate a code authorization workflow uh, for the authentication uh, uh, from your browser uh, or maybe from your uh, server to server so whatever is your preference so 
you will initiate a code authorization flow you will pass client id and uh, your your server will uh, append a client secret and then will send a request to google identity provider or whatever identity pro provider you are using it could it should be an o to support it provider so you will get a code in return then you will uh, exchange that code with an access token uh, by hitting token endpoint and you will get an access token so now you have got an access token uh, you are very close to accessing the api so now all you need to do is just you should know what api endpoint i need to hit for example if i want to uh, get my mail so there there would be definitely an endpoint that you have to check on the documentation so you have to hit the api endpoint uh, uh, respective api endpoint uh, with your bearer token uh, which you have oh sorry you, which the access token that you have received uh, and uh, uh, once you get the right access token you hit the right api and the api will check whether the scopes that it needs or the permissions this api need you is contained in your access token or not if it is there then the api will return the data if it is not there the api will throw uh, a bad request or an un unauthorized uh, request so uh, these kind of uh, uh, things will happen so yeah i mean this this is a short video but i just wanted to explain how o2 works and how you can access or consume the o2 apis which are secured with custom scopes so i created this video so i hope you have liked this video and if you really liked it then please hit like button and uh, subscribe my channel thank you very much